On March 14, 1945, a British Lancaster heavy bomber dropped a bomb known as the Grand Slam, a 22,000-pound behemoth that was the largest and most powerful bomb ever used up to that time. For years, only a nuclear bomb would be more powerful. British weapons designer extraordinaire Barnes Wallace designed numerous ingenious weapons, including the Tallboy Bomb, a 12,000-pound monster earthquake bomb that was used to attack hardened targets such as submarine pens and the German battleship Tirpitz, which was finally sunk with Tallboys. This is the death of the battleship Tirpitz. RAF Lancaster's roar to the attack. And here is the 45,000-ton pride of the German Navy firing desperately at the air raiders. A six-ton armor-piercing blockbuster is on its way. The Turbots is mortally hit, but replies with everything, including 15-inch guns, in this climactic battle of Tromsø Fjord in Norway. Another near hit. The RAF is scoring after two previous unsuccessful attempts from Scottish bases 1,200 miles away. Another blockbuster heads for the target. Perfect weather sweeps away the defensive smoke screen, and another hit is registered. These RAF pictures show the death agonies of the crippled monster. Months of preparation went into the assault. The RAF, in sinking the Tirpitz, turned in one of its greatest jobs. Wallace also designed the bouncing bomb that was used to destroy dams in German-held areas. An earthquake bomb is so named because it does not have to hit its target, just bury itself deep in the earth before blowing up, causing shock waves through the ground similar to an earthquake, destroying reinforced concrete and other materials indirectly. The bombs are constructed with heavier than normal casings on the front to allow deep penetration into the ground, and a delay fuse ensures the explosion takes place below the surface. When the vast amount of explosive, Torpex, is poured into the bomb casing, it takes a month to cool and harden. The only bomber capable of dropping a Grand Slam during World War II was the Avro Lancaster, a four-engine heavy bomber considered by the British to be the finest bomber of World War II. More or less similar to US B-17 and B-24 bombers, the Lancaster could carry a larger and heavier load although it was not quite as heavily armed with machine guns. The Grand Slam was so big it had to be carried externally under the belly of the Lancaster. On March 14, 1945, the Grand Slam made its combat debut when it was dropped from about 12,000 feet, with the target being the Schildesche Viaduct near Bielefeld, Germany. The giant bomb did its job and the viaduct was destroyed. This mission included several Grand Slam bombs and some tall boys thrown in for good measure. Several missions using the big bombs followed, with targets including viaducts, bridges, and submarine pens. Tall boys and Grand Slams were usually used together. The idea of a giant blast without the nuclear fallout was resurrected by the United States during the Vietnam War when the BLU-82 bomb, known as the Daisy Cutter, weighing 15,000 pounds, was used to create instant helicopter landing zones in the jungle. In 2003, the GBU-43B Massive Ordnance Airburst, or MOAB, bomb was introduced. A 22,600-pound bomb stretched over 30 feet long and was touted as the most powerful non-nuclear bomb ever made at that time. Obviously, the nickname Mother of All Bombs was used by air crews. Too big for any current bomber, the Daisy Cutter and Moab were dropped by C-130 Hercules cargo planes. Not to be one up by the U.S., Russia followed in the big bomb race with the Aviation Thermobaric Bomb of Increased Power, ATBIP, a weapon quickly gaining the nickname Father of All Bombs. First tested in 2007, this Russian Air Force weapon weighs only 15,650 pounds, but has the blast characteristics of 88,000 pounds of TNT. 
It is indeed likely the most powerful non-nuclear bomb ever made, with about four times the blast effect than the Moab. Both the Moab and the Foab are airburst-type bombs rather than the earthquake type. Both the U.S. and Russia plan to use these bombs in lieu of nukes, but with similar blast effects to a small nuke. The U.S. also developed various thermobaric-type bombs, including fuel-air explosive FAE types, also sometimes called the poor man's nuke. These bombs send a shockwave farther than any conventional bomb and are ideal for attacking targets such as bunkers and caves. Even terrorists have gotten on the FAE bandwagon, starting with the bomb that blew up the U.S. Marine Barracks building in Beirut in 1983, and later with the 1993 attack on the World Trade Center. Ever since pilots began dropping hand grenades and then mortar shells out of open cockpit biplanes at the start of World War I, air forces have come up with increasingly effective and deadly bombs, some showing incredible ingenuity. As a question for my students and others, what bombs do you find most interesting? Are there any that you would like us to write about? Please let us know in the comments section below this video. If you like this video and would like to receive notification of new videos, please feel welcome to subscribe to History and Headlines and becoming one of our patrons. Your viewership is much appreciated.